We wish you a very good day, and thank you for joining us here on WMKV Cares on 89.3 and 89.9 FM. We're streaming around the world at WMKVFM.org, and we have some world news happening here. What do they say? (laughs) Breaking news on television. We have world news here. I am actually visiting today with Abby Schwartz, the director of the Skirball Museum at Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion in Clifton, where March 5th will be the opening of a new exhibition called Rembrandt and the Jews, the Burger Print Collection. These are a set of etchings that are coming in from the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art in Santa Barbara, runs March 5th through April 30th. Abby, thank you for taking a few moments to talk a little bit about Rembrandt today and to tell us about this exhibition. I'm delighted to be here, George. My pleasure. People may have seen at the Taft Museum, there is a painting done by Rembrandt. Many people may not know that Rembrandt also did these incredible etchings. And these are actually a series, I believe, of 20-plus etchings from the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art. But also there will be some local connection here, thanks to the B'nai B'rith Klutznik Collection, which is now here at the Skirball Museum at Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. And there's even a surprise we're going to talk about later. You want to talk about something being, if I can use the word, beshirt, <laughs> meaning it was meant to be. I'm showing you a little bit of the Yiddish side here, but we're going to talk about something that was found out after this whole exhibition was arranged to come here. So stay tuned for a great story coming up later in the show. But let's talk for a moment about Rembrandt. Many people have seen his paintings, and I have to tell you, I've seen some of the etchings and some of the artwork that's going to be on exhibit here. I've seen them in the catalog. And the same beautiful, masterful, control of light of shadow that Rembrandt brings to paintings he does in these etchings for those who aren't familiar with this difference what is the difference in what people will see in this Rembrandt show Rembrandt in the Jews the Berger print collection the most important thing that I think I can say about Rembrandt and his career was that he was a master printmaker and in his career he made nearly 300 etchings. And he pushed the limits of this medium to places where no previous printmaker had ever gone. And he is still considered one of the great printmakers of the Western world. The reason for that is that just as you said, where he was such an amazing painter in terms of capturing the contrast of light and dark, uh, we call that chiaroscuro, and having areas that were deep in shadow and others that were glowing with light, he achieved that in the medium of etching, which to someone who is not an artist, and even to those who are artists, when you understand this medium, which is basically taking a copper plate, covering it with a ground, etching into that ground, drawing into that ground with an etching needle, and then putting that entire copper plate into an acid bath and taking it in and out multiple times so that certain lines are deeper and certain lines are less deep. The way that he managed that and created this incredible gestural quality of these etchings is in itself remarkable. We don't even have to think about the subject matter. All we have to think about initially is this medium. There was no computer assisted graphics oh, here. No. This is, we're talking 1600s. And Correct. now you come from the Taft Museum as well. You have a great background with the Taft mm-hmm. Museum. So you're a fine arts person. And this has to be near and dear to your heart to bring Rembrandt and these etchings, which actually, I would say it's even beyond art. It's also a capturing or a glimpse of a culture. Mm-hmm. First of all, your take on just bringing it here to the Skirball Museum. You have to be thrilled. Yes, well, I am thrilled. And, of course, the catalyst was these three etchings that came to us in the collection of the B'nai B'rith Klutznik National Jewish Museum, which we've had now as part of our collection since 2015. And, of course, this exhibition came across my desk. I said, well, we can put these etchings into context. And it was an extraordinary opportunity for me to learn more about these 
these etchings that came into our collection. And you mentioned the Taft, and also I should mention the Cincinnati Art Museum. My colleagues at both of those have been very helpful to me. At the Taft, of course, the wonderful portrait of a man rising from a chair. It's an extraordinary painting. The pendant to that painting belongs to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and there have been several times when the two paintings have been side by side, but it is one of the great treasures of the Taft, and as part of our Rembrandt experience, the Taft will be offering a discussion of the Rembrandt oil on Slow Art Day, which is a Saturday in April. It's April 8th, and because of our having the Rembrandt show here, they have offered to make that one of the slow art experiences, which is basically just looking at a few works of art, taking your time, and really learning. And as far as the Cincinnati Art Museum goes, they're placing their entire collection of Rembrandt etchings of Jewish subjects online through Google for people to be able to explore those etchings, many of which are the same etchings that we have here, and to be able to explore those. And I've also had enormous help from the staff of Cincinnati Art Museum, Cecile Meir, who is a paper conservator, and Kristen Spangenberg, who is the curator of prints, to help me understand where our prints fit in. And it so happens that they are printed on 19th or early 20th century paper, which tells us that these are later impressions of Rembrandt's etching, still original and still his work, but printed much later after he passed away. We're visiting with Abby Schwartz at the Skirball Museum at Hebrew Union College, Jewish Institute of Religion. By the way, they're at 3101 Clifton Avenue. And when this exhibit opens March 5th and runs through April the 30th, there are times where the Skirball Museum is open. That's Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11 to 4, Sundays 1 to 5. But you also accommodate school groups and special appointment groups. Yes, and people can contact us online or by phone at 487-3098 to talk about a special time for visiting or to jmendelson at huc.edu. And you can always contact the radio station as well. We have the information at WMKV. I do want to say there are a lot of people who don't think Jewish culture when you think of Rembrandt. (laughs) What is the connection? Because I understand some of these are biblical pictures, Mm -hmm. but some of them are a snapshot of Jewish culture in the Mm -hmm. 1600s. Tell us a little bit about Rembrandt and the Jews. Rembrandt was a lover of the Bible. It was something that occupied him lifelong, both the Old Testament or the Tanakh, as Jews appreciate it, the Jewish Bible, the Jewish scriptures, and New Testament. So many of his images, both in prints and in paintings, are of religious subjects. So this was something that intrigued him and in which he was interested. His home was in the quarter of Amsterdam where there were many Jewish people living. Both Sephardic Jews, these are Jews who had come from Spain and Portugal and because of religious intolerance and found in the Netherlands and Holland at this time freedom of religion and an opportunity to be who they were and to be accepted in their community. But also shortly after was an influx of Ashkenazic Jews, which are Jews from Eastern Europe. So there was quite a mix. They didn't necessarily always get along, the earlier immigrants and the later, but they were all part of this wonderful culture of Amsterdam, and they were all assimilating and being part of the community. And Rembrandt had among his friends and patrons several Jewish people and frequently used models from the Jewish community for his works of art. And here we're talking about one of these great Dutch masters, if you will. Mm -hmm. But there's a Cincinnati connection here that we're going to get to as this program goes Mm -hmm. on. I hope that you'll stay with us throughout the program here, a special recorded edition today of WMKV Cares, visiting with Abby Schwartz about Rembrandt and the Jews, the Burger Print Collection. It is coming to the Skirball Museum from the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art in Santa Barbara, California. And it will be here at Skirball in Cincinnati for a limited run. March 5th through April the 30th. 
There is also, when we talk about the influences on Rembrandt, there's an etching of one of his teachers. Is that correct? Actually, most of the work in this show are biblical subjects from the Old Testament. So it might be David and Goliath or Abraham and Isaac or Joseph telling his dreams. Many of the familiar stories from the Jewish scriptures. There are several portraits as well. There are two portraits, one of a Jewish doctor in the Amsterdam community of 17th century Holland and one of a rabbi. Both of these men were patrons of Rembrandt. And there are portraits of two women. Um, This is the great and the the little Jewish Jewish bride. And the little Jewish bride, which (laughs) when you really do the research, the great Jewish bride is actually Esther from the book of Esther. And the reason that she was ever even associated with being a Jewish bride is that she's wearing a pearl headband, which was something that Jewish brides wore in Amsterdam of the 17th century. But she's holding a scroll in her hand, which would be the scroll that she and Mordechai, her cousin, wrote to the king, Ahasuerus, to encourage him to let the Jewish people live and to practice their religion and to actually live because there had been an effort to completely annihilate them. And the little Jewish bride is actually a portrait of Rembrandt's wife, Saskia, posing as St. Catherine. So this is very ecumenical. Very <laughs> ecumenical. And that's there's a point to be made there because the assumption by early scholars who were looking for a way to connect Rembrandt with the Jewish people to make him sort of a Jewish artist, even though his family was, his mother was Catholic, his father was Dutch Reform. There seemed to be an affinity, and people looked for ways to make that true. And this, it wasn't really the way. But St. Catherine was tortured on a wheel, and the wheel features in this little Jewish bride image. So its current scholarship is that it is not the little Jewish bride. (laughs) <laughs> very good. If you're just joining us here on WMKV Cares, we are previewing a very special exhibition coming to the Skirball Museum at Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. They're located at 3101 Clifton Avenue in Clifton. This is an exhibition called Rembrandt and the Jews, the Burger Print Collection. It is coming here from the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art in Santa Barbara. It is running from March 5th through April the 30th. And these are prints from etchings done by Rembrandt. And there are 22 that are coming in from Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. There are at least three different etchings from the B'nai B'rith Kletznik collection, which mm-hmm. is part of Skirball Museum's mm-hmm. collection now here in Cincinnati. Abby, if people want to find out more about bringing a group out for this or about making reservations, maybe there's a civic group that wants to come out and see this or an art lovers Mm -hmm. group. How's the best way to make arrangements maybe for a special time? We are very happy to see groups, and we have many already planning on coming. We expect it to be popular, and it's not here that long. So if you're interested, give us a call at 487-3098 or contact J Mendelson at huc.edu, and we can set you up with a special time for a tour. Now, as we're in the second half of the show, and I want to make sure we keep giving that information out so people know that sure. they can get here. Sure. There is a Cincinnati side to this Rembrandt story. We're talking about Holland. We're talking about Jewish culture. Somehow, it all folds back to Cincinnati. I think everything in history always comes back somehow to Cincinnati. <laughs> How in the Dickens, well, we're talking about Rembrandt, not Dickens, but how <laughs> how, <laughs> how did Cincinnati come back into play here? This was a wow moment for you, wasn't it? Was it was a totally wow moment for me. On my worst day at work, there's always something that will totally amaze me, and this wasn't just such an experience. I sat down to read the catalog that came with the show, And in the opening remarks of the scholar who wrote the essay, the main essay for the catalog, it opens with a section that's all in italics, and I read that section, and then I read what the scholar wrote about these words, and it turns out that these words were written in 1946. They start with this sentence. It has proved a comfort to me in the era of European Jewish tragedy 
to dwell upon the life and work of Rembrandt. Here was a man of Germanic ancestry who did not regard the Jews in Holland of his day as a misfortune, but approached them with friendly sentiments, dwelt in their midst, and portrayed their personalities and ways of life. So that's the beginning of a long couple of paragraphs written by a man in 1946, just after the end of the Second World War. And I went on to learn that the man who wrote these words was a man named Franz Landsberger. He was a scholar born in Germany. He was the director of the Berlin Jewish Museum. He had been let go from that job because he was Jewish. And he went to Oxford to accept a speaking engagement. And while he was there, right about the same time that this was all happening to him, Hebrew Union College in Cincinnati, under the leadership of then-President Julian Morgenstern, was engaged in rescuing scholars from Europe who otherwise would have been sent to concentration camps and likely murdered in those camps. And Franz Lonsberger was one of those people who ended up coming to Cincinnati through the good graces of HUC. We have the letters that reflect the correspondence between Lonsberger and Morgenstern and the American consul in London. They are in the Jacob Rader Marcus Center of the American Jewish Archives, and we will be borrowing the actual letters to be put on display as added attraction for this exhibition. And again, the relationship to Rembrandt is that in 1946, Landsberger published two seminal books. One was called A History of Jewish Art. This was the first modern look at what we can consider to be Jewish art, which is a debate that still continues. Landsberger made a case, and you know other scholars have since augmented it or argued with it, but there's no questioning that he was the first modern scholar to really approach this topic. And then the other book that he wrote is this book that I have right here on the table, Rembrandt, the Jews, and the Bible. And in that same year, 1946, he published this book, which, again, was the first really modern look at Rembrandt's fascination with Jewish subjects. And again, his theory was basically, as, I, as you could probably tell from that first line, that the Jews were outsiders. He was sort of a little bit of an outsider. He didn't fit the mold of a lot of painters of his day and artists of his day. He wasn't a specialist in one area of either still life or portraiture or genre. He, he really did everything, and he wasn't always understood in his own time. So Lonsberger projects onto Rembrandt this idea of being an outsider, of being the other, of being alien. And that has largely been dismissed by modern scholars, and uh, people are looking at Rembrandt's biblical subjects more in the context of the religious milieu of 17th century Holland, which was a Protestant country, but there's a lot of Calvinist theology that Rembrandt would have been aware of, but he also was very much interested in the Jewish perspective and spoke often with his Jewish friends and his patrons about the Jewish Bible. So whatever the reasons, Lonsberger was the first to really make this a significant connection and write an entire book about it. And here he was at HUC, and he continued to stay here that many of the people who were rescued, among them was Abraham Joshua Heschel, who went on to be one of the great rabbis involved in the civil rights movement. He didn't stay in Cincinnati. Landsberger stayed here, and he became the curator of the museum that preceded the Skirball Museum. Wow. It was called the Union Museum. And he was the curator and lived here and stayed here and worked here until his death in 1964. So who knew? Right. You know, we always say we all love Cincinnati. Many of us are from Cincinnati our whole lives. And you look at this and say, wow, everything does come back here. But this is one where it wasn't even anticipated. That wasn't totally one of the... <laughs> surprised by this. And I really, really 
it, it makes me so proud, really, to think about someone whose scholarship likely would have never emerged because of the Holocaust and because it's not likely that he would have survived the war. We have Abby Schwartz here with us. Abby, we're down into our final minutes. And I know that you have some public programs. I think you've already alluded to at least one of them. Mm -hmm. The opening night on March the 5th here, actually that afternoon, 4 o'clock, is going to be a Baroque concert, taking us, stepping right back into the 1600s. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about what's going to be happening with that evening, with the grand opening of the exhibition, but then the other public programs that are coming up as we wrap up here today. Absolutely. So on Sunday, March 5th, we're calling it Sights and Sounds of the Age of Rembrandt, and we're starting with a lovely concert. It's the annual Wendy Cantor Memorial Concert called the Golden Age of Baroque music, and we have the Harmonati Ensemble that are going to be performing music by 17th century composers, including Schmelzer, Bieber, Stradella, among other composers. And one of the cool things is that the musicians are going to be playing period instruments. Oh, wow. So there will be, of course, violin, there'll be traverso, there'll be, there'll be viola da gamba, there'll be cello, there'll be harpsichord, organ and viola. So that will be extraordinary at four. And that will be in the Scheuer Chapel, which is on the campus of Hebrew Union College, just a few steps from the Skirball. So after the concert, everyone will gather at the Skirball. We'll have a lovely reception with some light hors d'oeuvres. And then we'll open the show with some remarks that I'll make and uh, the dean of the college will make. And we will open the show at 5.30, quarter to 6, and it'll be open till 7.30 that night. And this is open to the public. Open to the public and free to the public. Fantastic. That's that's and, perfect. Now, other then, public programs, yes. you have some more in March and going into right, April. Right. In March, on the 20th of March, it's a Monday evening, we are going to be thrilled to have Dr. Shelley Perlov, who is Professor Emeritus of Art History at the University of Michigan. So all of you U of M alums, I know there are a lot of you in Cincinnati. My husband's one of them, as is my daughter. Come and join us for this. Her topic is Rembrandt's fascination with Judaism. She has written an award-winning book, Rembrandt's Faith, Church, and Temple in the Dutch Golden Age. And she's a terrific speaker, and she will be engaging with us about Rembrandt's art and faith with a particular emphasis on his fascination with Judaism. And we're doing that in cooperation, in partnership with the Mayerson JCC. So we're delighted to be able to offer this lecture in partnership with our local JCC. And then the next program is a lunch and learn. We'll provide a lovely lunch and we'll meet at noon on Thursday, April 6th in Mayerson Hall here at the college where the museum is located. And we'll get to hear Dr. Christy Nelson, who is Professor Emeritus of Art History at the University of Cincinnati. She's a specialist in Dutch and Flemish art. She was my advisor for my master's thesis, and I took many classes with her, and she is a terrific teacher. And she will be giving us a talk an illustrated talk on Rembrandt's place in the Dutch Golden Age. So she'll sort of put these etchings in the context of his larger career and the unique milieu that was Amsterdam in the 17th century. And the exhibition will be open before and after both of these events. Abby Schwartz, director of the Skirball Museum here at Hebrew Union College, Jewish Institute of Religion. We're talking about Rembrandt and the Jews, the Burger Print Collection. It is running March 5th through April 30th. Abby, if people want to find out more information, because we've given a lot of information on this program, as we always do, What's the best way for people to find out more? Is there a place that they can check? Yes. If you want to learn more about the exhibition, just give us a call at 487-3098. You can also send an email to jmendelson at huc.edu. And you can check our website, www.huc.edu. Go to the museum, click on museums, and the scoreball will come up with all of our information. Well, I appreciate you taking time here with us on WMKV Cares as we kind of go for Baroque. Oh, yeah. So I had to get one in. I had to get one in. (laughs) Abby Schwartz, thank you so much for being with us, and best of luck with this wonderful exhibition here and the wonderfully complimentary pieces from the B'nai B'rith Klutznik collection that are part of this as well. Great way to tie it all together. 
and we wish all the best of luck. Thank you, George. Always a pleasure. You've been listening to WMKV Cares on 89.3 and 89.9 FM.